paranormal anomalies set out on this journey with one goal, to unravel the veil of the paranormal, with investigating places like Lakeside Cemetery where in the 1970s a flood raised coffins from the ground, the Palmer Hotel known by many, or the web of tales of the missing girl lost near Hoyt Lakes Memorial Cemetery. The Boyd House, located in Boyd, Minnesota. This location has much history. Little Swan Cemetery, near Hibbing, Minnesota. Its name says it all. The residential apartment building that for decades only housed the elderly. And last but not least, Lakeview Cemetery, Buell, Minnesota, said to be one of the most haunted locations in the state. These are our findings. Paranormal Anomalies. Mike, Jimmy, episode three. Hoyt Lakes Memorial Cemetery, where let me tell you, we got up there, we were really chasing the tale of the lost girl. So, Hoyt Lakes Memorial Cemetery has this tale that dates back a long ways. You've kind of seen a little bit of the evidence and stuff that we found on the internet in our sneak peek. When Jimmy and I got up there, again, we were chasing after this. I tell you what, there definitely could be some sort of something going on at Hoyt Lakes. Oh, it's more than just a something. There definitely is. There is. 100%. We got... And in this investigation, we went to a whole different spot. We got different evidence in a spot that we didn't even think we would get. Yeah, we ended up going off into the woods just adjacent to the road on the cemetery there. And wow, it really heated up. Yes, it did. Hardcore. We were taken back more than a couple moments. It's just like, is this happening? And it was. <laughs> and it was. So let's dive right in here. We're going to show you now the few pieces of internet lure that we took clips of off the internet to show you that people have talked about the Hoyt Lakes Memorial Cemetery, the, the haunting that they've had up there going on for a long time. So as you see in our sneak peek, Jimmy and I found these couple little tales from uh, news articles and internet articles online from this location, this place. And as you can see here, there's a lot of history behind this tale of the lost girl from Hoyt. So as you see here, we are setting up everything. I'm taking the responsibility of setting up the surveillance camera. We have roughly about 2,500 feet. We have four different cameras. Anton is getting all the cameras set, the 2.7, the 4K. Mike's in the van getting the TV set up and the computer. And as we were getting things set up, I tell you what, the temperature started dropping as the sun went down. So we really got hustled and bustled. We really got everything going, got everything in place. We got set up over where the girl from uh, all the tails went missing. We got another location that we caught evidence in the last investigation set up at. We set up one down at the very end of the cemetery where we had some really weird anomalies happen before. So here we go. So, if you've been following us on Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok at Paranormal Anomalies, you've been noticing that we've been talking about our haunted studio. So, we just had another piece of evidence, something possibly try to communicate. Let us know, because as we're making this, obviously, we will go through it, but if we miss something, we want to know if you found something. If you found something, call it out, let us know, send us an email, point it out into the YouTube channel feed down there in the comments. However you want to get it to us and tell us all about it, we want to hear about it this season. So, we're going to jump right in now to the investigation opener. Hey everybody, Mike, Jimmy, and Anton, we're here at Point Lakes Memorial Cemetery. That's right, Point Lakes Memorial Cemetery, where the tale of the lost girl has been told for decades now. We are hoping to uncover and unravel the truth behind this missing girl. So right now we're going to kind of get going here and talk a little bit about the cemetery, show it to you a little bit. But, you know, I want to talk a little bit about why we're back here. So the reason why we're back here is we were here earlier in the year and, well, we lost. 
we lost all of our evidence due to corruption, which was, I mean, it's unfortunate, but here we are doing what we do. And we are, we are super excited to be back at this moment. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. So right now, These are the only pieces of evidence that we got from our first investigation. And this one, you see this yellow mist that we caught from the Sony. And in this next clip, you see the big orb at the very top in the middle of the screen there. And, you know, being we lost all of our evidence, this is the only things we had left from this peak. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. So right now, we're going to pick up the cameras, and we're going to kind of walk around the cemetery and kind of show you the different spots we're going to be investigating this evening. So here we go. Let's get this investigation started. Perfect. All right. Yeah, me too. Now, we just heard a harmonica sound over off here in this tree line. When uh, we come back through during our investigation, we're going to see if we can't uh, do an EVP session over here and maybe we talk to the harmonica. Right up here, where this well is. We were told that over the summer, somebody had passed away. And they were a younger individual. And we're not quite sure where they're buried in the cemetery. And we're not going to go searching and looking for them either. But you and I, when we were coming in this afternoon, it felt like there might have been something kind of over here. Yeah, it did seem like you us to. It did, it did. <coughs> so this evening, we are going to start our investigation. So as you've seen, this set of eyes literally looks like it has been following us while we're going up to the water well. It's very interesting because in that one moment, it almost looks like it winks at us. And none of us noticed those eyes on any of the cameras. None of us noticed them. Like, you know, they weren't glowing in the dark like you'll see animals and stuff. So, and on all of our video, no point anybody says anything about these eyes. And we just couldn't believe it nothing else happened during the investigation at this point so then we decided let's do another EVP session here right before we left this part of the center Set up, let's just it. okay so as we were starting over here by this water well we started to have multiple problems with all of our devices spirit box the Sony the Canon everything started to act kind of weird like it's just not wanting to work right struggling so we're gonna start it Spirit box session and see if we can't communicate with what might be messing with our equipment. <laughs> Spirit box session, Point Lake Memorial Cemetery number one, spot. Water well. Is there anything here that I'd like to communicate with us? Please speak through this box. So throughout this spirit box session, nothing really happened. Nothing was really going on. You know, we thought, what the heck, let's give it a few more minutes, see what's what. But we were kind of growing impatient. 
And Jimmy thought, you know what, let's maybe switch gears, start heading down to a different part of the cemetery. So he wandered over and started taking some pictures with Sony and ended up capturing some pretty interesting stuff. Looking through the tree line, you wouldn't believe it. No, I didn't, but I heard that too. Like Did you hear that? Yeah. I can't see. So, this is the second time now we were walking by this area of the main drag, the main road in the cemetery. And we're so, I take this picture of Mike. And as you see, there are two light anomalies. One, that is on his arm and one that is right under portable SLS. And when we first came through earlier, we heard a harmonica and clicking, like, like somebody was taking a stick and kind of beating it up against the tree. We just kind of heard that tree anomaly stuff again. So we're going to try to go in here and do a little investigation, see what we can't shake loose. After capturing all these different anomalies over here in the woods, we decided it's time to go in there and see what we could find. It was a struggle from the very beginning. As we were entering, Anton was like tripping over everything, and I was even struggling as I was walking through the woods. So it kind of gave that weird aura feeling of maybe we shouldn't be there. But we persevered, pressed on, and we got in there and started the investigation. So we were really digging into this EVP session. And out of nowhere, we started to have all of our equipment fail. The 2.7K camera started failing. The 4K camera was behind us, and it didn't fail, which was kind of nice, but weird at the same time. Our voice recorders shut down. They stopped recording altogether. It was really weird. So we ended up breaking out my cell phone, and we still had the spirit box. The spirit box was still going, which was kind of crazy. Yeah, it surely was, because it... Later on, it started to have its moments where it just, it did not want to work anymore during this moment in the woods. And so we kind of were lucky and I, like I said, I broke out my cell phone, we got it going and here's that evidence, the only stuff that we really got left from it. Yeah. Is that you still trying to communicate with us? Some kind of a response. Some kind of a response. But it doesn't happen when we're not asking questions. Right, so it's it's intellectual. It's actually going back and forth with us here. Is that the only way you can communicate? Did you hear your spirit box say no? Or is that just something that I heard? I heard something. I heard another response, but I didn't know what it was. It very well could have been a no. It's very muffly sounding. We got James approaching here. He was just messing around with some equipment. So Jimmy, um, we just had a few re short responses, kind of like, huh, eh, what? Like, on yeah. the spirit box. That's interesting. I'm not surprised seeing that. Uh, this place has been like drawing, especially me, to this spot, especially ever since that harmonica noise. And we were talking about that when Anton and I kind of came in here and started kind of doing this. And that harmonica noise, I mean, it was prominent. You could hear it. <coughs> oh, yes, you could. Yep. And, cut it out and now the spirit box started going and doing another weird transition. It's switching over on its own. We've never had this happen before. This is kind of new. No, we haven't. Yeah, I don't know, man. It kind of went cold over here now. Huh. <laughs> it did though. It, you know, I, I think it was it was trying to say something. It almost sounded like a girl. Oh, maybe it doesn't like me. Or maybe it was that girl that went missing something up here. Something just like felt like it ran up on me over here, and I turned and I thought, Yeah, but what was that? Was that you just trying to communicate with us through the spirit box? Okay, that was you. And I turned and I thought, Yeah, but what was that? Was that you just trying to communicate with us through the spirit box? Okay, that was you. What do you want? I 
Another type of response, we don't know what it said. Did you take the missing girl? Holy fuck. I heard yes. I just heard a yes. Else again. All right. So you, okay, you took the missing girl. Why did you take the missing girl? Just so we know, it is dangerous to be in here with these dead branches, trees moving. Yeah. Did you hear that? I heard that. That came. That came towards where the girl. Oh, what was that? All right. So Jimmy noticed something off in the distance. And with all of our equipment failing, we didn't have much left. So we decided, let's go back. Let's get the 4K camera. Jimmy moved up with the Sony camera, decided he was going to try to get a couple more pictures and kind of see what he could do. So Anton and I walk our way back, and we start doing this. And while we were gone, Jimmy had a couple experiences. So what I thought I saw was the girl. This white mist kind of just floated by and I was just like, so we made our way further into the woods to see if we can capture what I saw. And we went and let me tell you, as we got deeper, it kind of felt like things kind of dissipated. Like there wasn't as much energy and stuff. It was kind of weird. But we still set up the 4K camera and we attempted to do another spirit box session. So being nothing was really going on, we decided to wrap things up back here. But Anton thought he heard something. He turned around and thought he seen something. Get to Jimmy and I's attention. And we turned around but really didn't see what he was talking about. And we eventually decided to make our way out of that area altogether. And head back to the van and have a warm-up session. Yeah, because this night had been very cold. It, it was bitter. It was windy. It was just... I mean, we persevered. We did what we needed to do. So... It was fantastic, yeah. And we spent a good, what, 45 minutes an hour in the woods. Yes, yes we did. And it was, well, again, it was cold, it was bitter. Whatever Anton saw, though, it did get our attention because, you know, in that brief moment, we're like, well, okay, let's let's actually go see what maybe he saw. But it turned up nothing, and we were just like, okay, let's go warm up. Yep, collected the equipment and headed to the van. They're showing us, yeah, too. So here we go, guys. Jimmy. So we are over here investigating the tale of the lost girl. All the woven different stories that people have heard over the last 40, 50 years has gotten so mixed up and so entangled that we wanted to come in here and actually get some real evidence for once. For people to look at this and be like, wow, what is going on? What is, what's happening? So we really dug in while we were back here. We spent a good couple hours back here and it was cold. It was bitter. But in the end, it paid off. So this is that same area where we got in the first investigation that yellow mist that we showed you in the earlier evidence at the very beginning of this episode. Now, we knew there's stuff over here, stuff that can go on. Well, we brought everything. We brought the portable SLS, we had a surveillance camera, we had the 4K, the 27K started working again, so we added that back into the mix. We had the spirit box, the Sony, the Canon, we had multiple voice recorders. We really dug in and it really paid off in the end because we ended up getting a couple of pictures on the Sony that kind of have us scratching our head. It kind of relates back to a photo that Jimmy caught earlier 
with that red and blue light anomaly, as you see here in this one, there's this red dot, red orb, kind of right then in the this next one. It gets bigger. It manifests. It's it's kind of interesting. That little red orb manifests into this red light rod or light anomaly. So after capturing these and seeing them on the sony, Jimmy and I are like, we have to move deeper. We have to go further into this area. And we did. We went deeper. And we brought all the equipment except for the 4K. We left that back just in case something weird happened again where all of our equipment started to fail. Since we had that twice now, we didn't want it to happen a third. So we moved further in, trying to figure out what was going on, what were we were seeing, possibly communicate with whatever this could possibly be. And I tell you what, when we started at first, we didn't think anything was going to be as interesting as this. If you're trying to communicate, you might have to yell as loud as you can so we can hear you. As you heard there, we caught an EVP saying, what? And we were kind of taken back and shocked, like, what the heck did we just hear? So, you know, with the anomalies going on, this EVP, back here where this girl so probably got lost, which we're feeling she did get lost back here, is really starting to heat up. That is the response that we got. If you want to communicate with us, this is your last opportunity. Leave it there. Just leave it there. We'll come back for it. Jimmy caught a mist in the same area we caught the mist in the last investigation. So we're going to move over oh here. Oh my god, does it feel a lot colder? Like, what? I actually feel warmer. Weird. Yeah, we... Huh. Oh! Doing that again? Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. Love it. Yeah. Oh, oh that means... Yeah, yeah, really yeah okay. Okay. I'm half warm, half cold. My entire body warmed up, except for my fingers. Like, I am so I, much warmer I right just, now. I just, like, dropped. Jimmy warmed and up. The, the sign away from me is cold. Is that you trying to communicate with us via body temperature fluctuation? As you can see, we didn't notice it at the time, but we started to have equipment failure again. So, we were kind of shocked later on in this evidence review to see this kind of going on. When all this other stuff with the EVP and the mists and the red orb. Come on, communicate with us. After tonight, we're not going to be here ever again. We're never coming back. This is your last opportunity. Are you able to communicate? What can we do to help you? So in this picture you see that tree in the middle, the face, and the mist surrounding it. It is like I've been trying to capture this all night and I finally got it. So, yeah, yeah we I can move over here. So, it'd be really. Yeah, what? Is there any entities that all that need our help?
might be able to them. Do you want us to leave? Trying to communicate with us, talking off in the distance. So at this point, we've been at it for a couple hours back here, trying to unravel the tale of the lost girl up in Point Lake. And at this point, we're exhausted. It's cold. We decide, you know what, let's maybe just go back to the van, have a quick little break. But we couldn't help but feel like we weren't done here. But we were just so cold and so tired from the evening that we just really couldn't go on too much longer. So we decided to do the hard thing with any investigation and call it an evening. And just as we're kind of wrapping up, we couldn't help but think about all the interesting anomalies that took place throughout the evening. And we are so excited that we were able to bring this evidence to you guys. And I tell you what, we're hoping that in the next episode, episode four, it will be just as exciting. So we get out of the woods and we start getting all of our stuff together and decide let's get into the tear down quick because it's cold and let's get out of here. Good investigation. And there you have it, episode three. Hoyt Lakes Memorial Cemetery. You know, we never thought at the beginning of this, this location would be this haunted. But, oh my gosh, as the evidence has shown, it is. It's ridiculous. So, leading in to episode four, Lakeview Cemetery, Buell, Minnesota. That's right. For the last 40 years or more, it has been known to be one of the most haunted locations in the state of Minnesota. Tune in next week, episode four, Lakeview Cemetery, Fuel, Minnesota.